Hello, everyone. A uh, few questions, please. Who is, who is going to be the first one? Oh, we have one. Can you please hand over the mic? Please uh, introduce yourself and then uh, tell whom do you want to ask the question. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Prabhu. Uh, my question is to Peter. In your uh, one of the earlier slides, you showed a whole lot of industries where you have given your solutions. Uh, which is the industry which you find most complex and therefore the most challenging to uh, you know install your uh, solution, and why? <clears throat> I don't know if uh, an industry will feel honored by being named complex or insulted by being named not complex. So I have to be careful here as to uh, what industry I actually name. Um, you know, probably one of the most complex industries we deal with is the life sciences and pharmaceutical industry. Uh, they have very sophisticated batch processes. They have all of the complex record keeping and logist all of the track and trace kind of stuff you have to do. Uh, it's very difficult for them to go in and make changes online because all the systems are validated. Uh, the integration with the IT systems already has to be done to, to support all of the, the record keeping. So in terms of just pure complexity of getting in and doing some things with systems, I would probably say the, the life sciences pharmaceutical guys are one of the more complex industries to work with. Can I have a mic, please? Vivek? Yeah, here. I am Vivek Gupta from DCM Shriram, Kota, Rajasthan. Uh, my question is that uh, most of the industries have got the DCS now, and we have historians with us. So as far as the solutions related to the IIT is concerned, uh, have you ever thought of or explored the ideas of why not to utilize those historians first to start with, rather than going for the new sensors put on the compressors, on motors, or somewhere else. Have we explored that possibility of first utilizing the history, which is already available in the DCS, and then to utilize it for the predictive or the prescriptive kind of the maintenance? This address to whom? Yeah, well, that is, that is pretty much what our, my presentation was trying to say, was uh, typically, and we partner with various historian guys, but specifically with OSI. And um, for production data, I would say yes. All that data is in a lot of the historian systems that customers have already because they have production sensors already in place. But when we look at other areas that we want to do these applications in, like reliability, frequently the data is not there. The data is not there because it's been manually connect, co collected. It's never made its way into the historian. Do they, do they track their energy consumption by process unit or by piece of equipment? Do they have sensors that do that? No, typically they don't. Do they have, you know, real uh, relevant time sensors looking at corrosion? No, they use manual tabs where they go in and do manual inspection on corrosion. So yes, you're right, for production data, uh, frequently that data is already in the historian and a lot of customers already use it to do advanced process control, to do optimization, to run maybe some analytics around what's happening with their, with their production side. But when we look at reliability, energy consumption, all these other applications, then typically they actually have to get the data uh, from, they have to put the sensors in place first to get the data. Most often we find that data is then sent directly to a historian, right? So it doesn't need to go into the automation system because it's not going to be used for the control of the plant. It's going to be used by other people that are looking at reliability, energy consumption, and all these other applications. So the historians are a very valuable piece of infrastructure that are already there. But for a lot of these applications, they don't necessarily already have the data in those historians. And uh, another aspect uh, I would like to share is that, uh, in fact, this is a very good uh, idea. and. Uh, the example I can share is uh, Exxon Mobil, which uh, Andy has shared in his uh, uh, presentation. They have uh, implemented using the, in the same DCS environment the early event detection uh, system. So that is uh, uh, proprietary of uh, Exxon Mobil, and uh, because the unlike other historian DCS historian, the biggest advantage is that you have data in milliseconds available 
because if you take uh, your other historians, who have your OSI Pi or IP21, you have defined frequency of two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. So, and for if it is the objective is the data analysis and uh, generate uh, predictive analytics for the uh, uh, next shift operator. Because the challenge the industry is facing is a workforce. We don't have good operators in all the 24 hours uh, shift. So, if we provide uh, uh, generate the trains and based on generate uh, based on the trains if we generate alerts for the operator which could be useful for the new operator who has just taken over the charge in the shift and handling the precious assets of the company yeah there is one last question uh, after that you can interact with the speakers during lunch the last question please I am Sarangapani from NTPC. My question is addressed to Madam Annie, uh, Mary Walters. Uh, you mentioned about the reality model and the engineering model. So, vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis what is the uh, advantages? We, uh, what I mean is that if you have an engineering model uh, which helps uh, throughout the asset life cycle of the plant, and then you have a, uh, there are certain changes which actually take place in the actual installation. So you have an as-built model. So uh, in a, a reality model, you are able to get the as-built, you know, a, a state of the equipment. Whereas the engineering model is basically for the engineering part. So how do you link it? Suppose I have got a plant where I got a part equipment. For example, we have turbine where we have an engineering model. But for the other equipments, we don't have a, uh, I mean, any SAD model. So when you go for an installation, how do you link the engineering model and the reality model uh, per se? Uh, 